My name is Patricia Duggan. I was working as a nurse in Parkland Memorial Hospital. I drove my car in towards the hospital and I could hear the noise of all the sirens, which seemed louder and more urgent than normal. The president, his limp body cradled in the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, has been rushed to Parkland Hospital. The governor was taken to the same hospital. The president... There were an awful lot of people milling around, and I think I saw Mrs. Kennedy. We weren't told at that time he died. It hit us all very hard. I'm Robert Dalek, a presidential historian. I've written two books about John Kennedy. I had an apartment at 110th Street and Broadway, began walking down Broadway, and there was a small crowd gathered around an automobile listening to the radio, and they seemed quite agitated. I stopped and I said, what's happening? And they said, the president has been shot. Well, I walked home, turned on the television set, and Walter Cronkite was announcing that the president was dead. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a press report over the wires that the President of the United States has been the victim of an assassination. <laughs> we will play the funeral march from Beethoven's Third Symphony. My name is Peter Crane, and I was a 17-year-old high school student in Washington, D.C. when President Kennedy was killed. November 22nd was a Friday, and the funeral was Monday. My mother's office building had a 10th floor balcony overlooking Connecticut Avenue, and I took pictures of the procession as it went past. At the head of it was Mrs. Kennedy, with Robert Kennedy on her right hand and Teddy on her left. The morning sun was behind them, and the three of them were casting long shadows before them as they walked down the avenue, which somehow seemed very appropriate and moving. 